And our next guest says the tariffs may do more harm than good in addressing intellectual property problems with China. Joining us right now is John Frisby, president of the U.S.-China Business Council. Good morning to you. Good morning. Help us understand what was a volatile day yesterday. Uh, you heard what Wilbur Ross had to say on our air. Then you had Larry Kudlow uh, again say this is really just part of a, a grand negotiation. That we shouldn't, I don't want to say that we shouldn't take uh, what's been said so far too seriously, but that there's a lot of room and things that may change and evolve over the next several weeks. To the extent that it can evolve, where do you see the fault lines? Where, where is there an opportunity for this to, to, to be better or worse, both for us and for China? Well, I think what's been lost in the activity over the past couple of days is the underlying issue uh, that's driving the release of the tariff list by the United States and China. There is a case filed uh, by the U.S. Trade Representative last August that started all of this. So it's been in the works for a while. Nothing that happened over the past couple of days was, was necessarily a surprise. But that case is focusing on whether China compels U.S. companies to transfer technology basically as the price of market access in China. It's a very real problem. It does affect uh, American companies in certain sectors, and it does need to be addressed. That's the key issue. What we haven't seen the Trump administration articulate very well yet is what solution they would like to see. In other words, what's the, what does success look like that would lead them to say, all right, we're not going to move ahead with tariffs, that we do feel like uh, the problem is going to be sufficiently addressed. The U.S.-China Business Council has some ideas around that, get China to stop requiring joint ventures in certain sectors that, in essence, uh, give them leverage to compel technology transfer over there. But to this point, we haven't really seen what the administration's goals or outcomes are. We've seen all the tariff lists. Uh, the risk there, of course, is the collateral damage that can be done to, to the American economy, consumers and households. But the link between how you take that and get to uh, addressing the issues related to technology transfer is the one that needs to be articulated. Okay, but let's, so let's, let's talk about the, the technology transfer and then specifically this issue, which I know is near and dear to your heart, which is ridding uh, China of this, the, the joint venture requirement. Where is the leverage point that you think the Trump administration has or doesn't have in that debate? Well, I, I think what you have to look at is how China has used licensing restrictions and used those joint venture requirements just in key sectors. It's important to keep in mind that you know, most American companies can invest in China and own 100 percent, and that's where the issues uh, don't exist. If the Trump administration can use tariffs to get to the table and be able to get China to try to move forward with reforms, that's a good start, but it can't be one that just ends up with no result, and then you get into this trade skirmish with all, all this damage that might go I on. Get that. I get that completely. What I, what I don't understand, and maybe you just try to help me if you can, is are you of the view that, that by imposing these tariffs, they will get to that table to get to the points that you want, or are you suggesting that you actually think this is going to be unsuccessful and therefore you have other, other worries? Well, not noticed so far is that the Trump administration actually did file a case, the World Trade Organization, last week that looks at five laws and regulations in China that deal with technology transfer. That's a good way to go about perhaps resolving this issue in a form that uh, China uh, agrees is, is acceptable for resolving right. uh, disputes. The tariff issue is one that just has too much risk in it, with too much collateral damage. I think China is willing to come to the table. Uh, I was in China a couple weeks ago. We had meetings with uh, senior Chinese officials. Uh, they've indicated they're willing to come to the table. But there is a real question about how much they're willing to do. Uh, behind uh, all of this is, is some, I guess I would say, a loss of confidence in the American business community about China's policy right. direction. They haven't moved forward with economic reforms. They haven't moved forward with openings. John, they've promised a lot, but they haven't done it. Did you see Feldstein's piece in the journal today? I did not. Martin Feldstein, how to make trade peace with China, and the cutout is a mutual promise to abide by the WTO's intellectual property rules would solve the problem. So if both, and that would, both, neither side would lose face if all you did was say, from here on out, we're going to abide by the WTO's well, intellectual property. they would lose by admitting that they've been cheating this well, they, they'd time. they'd say, we, we have nothing, we don't need to change anything. And then all of a sudden start doing it, and no one would know one way or the other, right? They wouldn't have to concede that they would. Would that work? No, I, I think you need more specific, focused outcomes that target getting rid of the joint venture requirements, that target licensing requirements, that also force uh, technology transfer in certain sectors. Those are the kinds of the outcomes of, that would matter to American business. That's the kind of negotiation that needs to happen.
Well, La last question. It relates to this. Uh, Jamie Dimon also out with his letter. Yep, great he, ma he makes the same I, uh, similar argument around the WTO in terms of uh, China being listening or considering itself a, a developing country and how that needs to change. Um, is that something that you think could actually happen? Well, the, the multilateral system uh, is, is one that uh, has its merits. It's also, obviously, in China's case, not the answer to everything. I think American business wants to make sure that the U.S. continues to honor our obligations, but there's a recognition that the WTO hasn't been sufficient to address all the issues that China presents. And I think there's a feeling that something more needs to be done uh, in order to be more effective in getting China to adhere to the global trade rules. Okay. John, we've got to leave the conversation there, but uh, always appreciate your perspective. Thank you. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.